Welcome everybody. Well, uh, thank you for joining the tutorial today. Today's speaker is Jesse. Jesse is a software engineering working at an ad tech company in Tokyo. His interest is to bridge the gap between data science and engineering. And today's topic would be how to develop ML APIs with Python from online learning data set. Let's welcome Jesse. Thank you for a nice introduction. So hello everyone. Um, hi, I'm Jesse. I'm a software engineer working at an IT company specializing in education industry based in Tokyo. Uh, my Twitter account is Jesse Tetsuya, so uh, I'm going to upload it on my Twitter later so you can check it if you have an interest in it. So I mostly work in both data science and engineering and I've been involved with several data-driven projects, and I've been implementing ML APIs and ML Ops environment. And prior to the current job, I used to research and study the relationship between the online learning behaviors and the online learning outcome, outcomes of higher education in the UK. And before that, I used to maintain and develop the learning management system used for vocational schools and prep schools. So based on these experiences, I'm gonna try to talk about how to develop ML APIs with Python from online learning dataset today. So this tutorial will proceed like this slide. Uh, I will briefly tell you the <coughs> introduction of this tutorial and the background is so on. And next I will tell you how to develop the APIs step by step with demonstration having the having maximum 15 minutes. <coughs> and we should have 10 minutes break after second demonstration. And at the, at the end of this tutorial, I will summarize this tutorial. So anyway, I have to apologize at first that I do not finish pushing the code on GitHub. So I will push it next week and share you on the next week. So let me share a background and purpose of this tutorial. The reason I'm going to talk about this topic is because uh, recently Python engineers have more opportunities to work with data scientists or researchers. Somehow. So understanding the processes to develop ML APIs can help make AI ML projects work more smoothly. And there are less business use case to implement AI ML application uh, APIs than develop ML models. So yes, um, I'm gonna try to explain it with demonstration. So, but the target audience might be engineers uh, who are working with data scientists or researchers or engineers who are involved with AI ML projects. So, but uh, this topic seems to be very broad. Um, the development processes can be different depending on each situation that we are working place. So before getting down to the main topic, um, let me share a little bit of uh, premises about this tutorial. So the goal of this tutorial, I hope that audiences can earn the general, generalize the methods to apply on the tasks of your AI ML projects and understanding, I hope that audiences can understand the processes, the whole processes from analysis to API implementation by using Python. No goal of this tutorial, I will avoid mathematics and statistics. I will avoid talking about the mathematics statistics as much as possible. I will try to focus on Python. And I will uh, I will try to talk up I will try to avoid talking about the detailed tutorials. I will focus on general use case of Python based tools. So this is the basic uh, uh, development cycle development cycle in AI ML projects. In this tutorial, I will use online learning dataset. Uh, in this case, um, by using learning log data, data scientists uh, write uh, research-oriented code uh, through finding optimal models or algorithms. 
So engineers transform the research-oriented code into MAPIs and integrated them into learning management system or the online learning platform. So this talk uh, focuses on the processes of transformation from research-oriented code into MAPIs. So <clears throat> now, uh, what is a research-oriented code? So research-oriented code in AIML project is a code written mainly by data scientists or <coughs> researchers for figuring out the most efficient and suitable machine learning model. So what is the MAPIs? Machine learning APIs are basically are composed of three elements. Uh, preparation code, preprocessing code, and calculation code or ML code. So researchers focus focuses more on writing preprocessing code and ML code through an iterative process, and then it is integrated into production code. On the other hand, engineers have more responsibility to write the whole part of the code in production level. So this is an example of preprocessing code written by researchers. Uh, this code seems to be very long function and useful, useful loop. Uh, this code can allow researchers to visually trace the code from the top to the bottom and easily uh, quickly write it. So this is a sample ML code with logistic regression this code use data pen and they use data frame. So it can make researchers easily handle input data and trace output data with data frame. So this code is an example of the code written by engineers. Uh, this code seems to be shorter than previous code and there are less comprehensions and set comprehension and there's two simple function on the bottom. Uh, actually, a Discord builds a model in much faster and simpler way. So now, what is the gap between research-oriented code and production code? According to the article about the quality evaluation of ML products, which is published by Google, it mentioned scoring from 0 to 12 and 0 point is more like research project. Uh, this is a research oriented code. On the other hand, the ML products which are more than 12 points are exceptional levels of automated testing and monitoring. So this tutorial will, will aim to tell you how to transform 0 point quality of the code into around five or six points quality and tell you options to change it into more than two points qualities. So in addition to the academic publishment, based on my experiences, I identified three differences between research oriented code and the production code. So they are different scopes and different characteristics of coding styles and different objectives coding of coding styles. So researchers are focused more on writing preprocessing code and ML code. On the other hand, engineers have responsibility to write all part of the code in production level. The research or code seem to be easily handled and visually traceable. And on the other hand, production code need to be concerned about high calculation speed, high readability, and they should be testable and modular. This is because our research is focuses on finding the most efficient and suitable machine learning model. And on the other hand, engineers have responsibility to make the code work on the server correctly and reliably. So now 
what are Python engineers supposed to do for research oriented code? So modularize the research oriented code into preparation code, preprocessing code, ML code, and refactor them and write the code to check how it can work correctly. So this tutorial focuses on the procedure, procedures to transform research oriented code into ML APIs. Okay, all right, so now let's get down to the main topic. So there are three steps to transform research-oriented code into ML APIs after understanding data. So what we have to do at the first is to understand data. And first, modularize and refactor and check. So, okay, first, we have to understand what, it, what data can be stored and created and what data looks like and what is the nature of data and what algorithm is applied for on this data and what for. So in this tutorial, I use uh, sample data and the codes used for educational technologies because my background is in the educational technology. So, so let me share what educational technologies are like, um, what data can be stored and how they are used. So there is one major type of educational technologies such as learning management system or online learning platform, for example, these are um, Moodle, Blackboard, Udemy, Edix, and Coursera, and others. So these systems uh, have several functions to help learners to study online. For example, online quiz function can be able for students to take online quizzes or online tests. Uh, teachers can make online tests and they distribute them to students. Video lesson function can make it possible for students to take a lesson from home from home through on PC screen. While the students are using these functions, a deep learning log data is stored in database behind the online learning system, uh, generates the characteristics of the learning log data as time series format. The data Basically, I include what students take online tests, what kind of online tests are disputed, when students take online tests, and whether they answer the quizzes or not, and get correct answers or not. So what data looks like? <clears throat> so this is a part of data used in this tutorial. Uh, this data is about uh, whether students answer each question correctly or not. So their student name, the difficulty, the subject name, exam name, item name, which is question, item ID, and correction, which is binary data. D difficulty exists per student. And this means that item, which students answered, have how much the item is difficult in other words, this difficult also can mean the abilities of students. So in order to understand the nature of the data, we have to do data wrangling, basically with pandas. So I will show you demonstration later. So when doing data wrangling, pre-processing data is important. So please memorize the four kinds of methods to do the wrangling. <clears throat> I said that I will avoid mentioning mathematic things, but uh, we have to understand what input, what data, what input and output. So in other words, we have to understand parameters for algorithms. Don't, don't worry, you don't need to understand this formula. So this is just algorithm to predict uh, whether students can get correct questions or not. 
So this algorithm is called as item response theory or uh, two parameter logistic regression. So in this tutorial, I will make API to predict whether students can get the correct questions or not. So there are three kinds of parameters to calculate the probabilities, such as theta, and theta, parameter A, parameter B. So theta is the ability of student, which is how much each question is difficult for each student. And parameter A, is discrimination parameter. This is how much the question is different from others, which is how much it is identical. So parameter B is how much each question is actually difficult. It's theta and parameter B look the same, but theta exists per student and parameter B exists per question. So in this tutorial, I will use the same data for parameter B and theta, but the way to store in database is different. So these three kinds of parameters are going to be input data for this algorithm. On the other hand, output data is going to be probabilities to predict correction for item. So now let's look at the uh, real code. Okay, uh, yes, uh, this is demo. I will use the pandas mainly. And the goal of this demo one is to let you know what the real research oriented code looks like. Also, I would like to prepare the data to input into algorithm. And there are some words like the analysis scripts, the wrangling, exploratory analysis, and so on. In this tutorial, I use uh, research-oriented code. But uh, what we what we will look at here is data preparation for calculating it. Sorry, Jesse, to interrupt you. That um, could you make the font make the word bigger? Okay. Your code is a little bit small. All right. Hello, can you hear me? I don't know, the, the display, the, no. the text. Could you large, make your text? Zoom in the, the notebook. Enlarge your screen, please. Hey, Jesse, could you zoom in a little bit? OK. Yeah. Hi, Jesse. Could you hear us? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, could you uh, zoom in the text, the display? Oh, uh, this, this code? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you zoom in a little okay. bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see it? 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 Zoom in a little bit more. More? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Yeah, it's clear. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You can keep going. Okay. So, yes, uh, let's look at the whole data at first. So, I will load sample data to C3 and load it. Can you see that? Um, there is a student name and difficulty and a subject name and exam name and item name and item ID and the correction. So this is a whole uh, part, whole part of this data. And <coughs> the data has around 50,000 records. Uh, in order to do try and error of calculation, many times I suggest that you try with 
a small data set. So I will extract data with only one subject because this data has several kinds of subjects such as mathematics, chemistry, and history, and etc. Yeah. So now before that, check if this data is <coughs> this data has now or not no now or not. So I will use is now function. And now you can see false, 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 but I, I'm not sure. Describe function. So unique, uh, unique value is one, uh, this is a false. So this means uh, this data does not have <coughs> now or not <coughs> empty, empty record. So yeah, this, this data seems to be very clean. So <coughs> also check the amount of unique data and you can use an unique function, it's to the name has uh, around, uh, around 15,000 <clears throat> and difficult. Oh. Difficult uh, is scaling from one to 15 and the subject name has 10 kinds of subject and exam name 68, uh, item question name and 284 question ID 284 and correction is binary data, so two. Okay, so I would like to know the what kind of difficulty exists in this data. Uh, this difficulty is scaling from C3 to WA1. So C3 is the lowest scores and A double, A1 is the highest score. So I would like to know grouping. <clears throat> so algebra and algebra two and chemistry, English, Japanese, classic, mathematics hyphen A, mathematics reading, science, and English looks. English has the largest data, I think. So <clears throat> I would like to sort. Yes, English is a lot, has the largest data. So I would like to use uh, English subject. So I would like to filter. So <clears throat> during data wrangling, um, uh, we sometimes forget, especially I, I sometimes forget uh, what we should do next and what method of pandas we can use. So in my case, I basically use DIR, DIR functions and I will use, I will try to find what should I next. Like if we want to do count, okay, here we go, count method. If we want to know correlation, we can find a correlation method. Describe a basic, you can know basic stats. So you can, uh, in my case, I try to look for what I should do next by using a DLI function. So now I will try to extract a, <coughs> a data set with only uh, English. So in the case of Pandas, Uh, you can execute a filtering by with just one line. In that case, only English, only English. And this data has around 30,000 records. Uh, you can check 30,000, same. So <clears throat> I correctly uh, filtered this data. So, <clears throat> I have to do, I have to share the condition of the algorithm, which is the item response theory in this tutorial. The algorithm do not calculate question, uh, which have only correction or only incorrection. So I had to, 
have to write uh, remove item ID, which has these only correction data like this code, like this one line code. Um, <coughs> Oh. And try to reset index. I could get the uh, index list of input data, which have only a subject, uh, English subject, and excluding uh, all of corrections data or only in collection data. And I will filter like this code, writing by the code like this. Yes, uh, this, I think uh, this, uh, this code uh, originally does not have any all of the correction data or in correction data. So lastly, I have to replace categorical data with numbers to calculate uh, two parameters logistic regressions. <clears throat> so I'm going to replace uh, categorical data with numbers. I wrote dictionary and I replaced it with numbers. Um, I just uh, made an original uh, dictionary mapping. The lowest score is 78, I randomly uh, mapping, mapped. So uh, 78 and lowest score F3 is 33, uh, F, uh, 33 and you replace it. And we uh, successfully uh, replaced the uh, categorical data with uh, numbers. So now we almost could get the uh, input data. We could almost finish the pre-processing but uh, I would like to prefer uh, change uh, the name of columns difficult as uh, special difficulty. So I will rename. So now uh, preparation is almost done, but but it seems to be hard to understand and it is very procedural. Also, I guess that other people do not understand what the code want to do. So there are a lot of clean code or analysis scripts on the data, uh, uh, data science textbooks in public but this is very real research oriented code. So well, basically we start to analyze data and the right code by try and error. So let's move to the next step, which how we can clean, clean this code. So now uh, let's modularize uh, research oriented code. So there are the th three small steps. Categorize research-oriented code into preparation code, preprocessing code, and ML code. And then break them out into functions and make them testable. And glorify input and output of the code and define URI. So I already, I already showed a, a research-oriented code, but this is a page of research-oriented code written with Jupyter Notebook. This code is written for calculating probabilities to get the students correct answer for certain questions of exam. This code is procedural and some of them are not classified. It could be harder for us to understand the role of each code. So, <coughs> okay, uh, so it could be harder for us to understand the code, the role of each code. So. But I actually, I wrote it, uh, but I struggle to understand the code. So this is because this research-oriented code seems to be tightly coupled. 
So in order to categorize this code, find the code to, to, to load input data or access database first, it can be categorized as preparation code. Next, find the code to make, replace, filter, or delete input data. It can be pre-processing code. Then find the code to execute calculation or train data. It can be categorized as ML code or calculation code. So now I could categorize research-oriented code into preparation code, preprocessing code, ML code, or calculation code, like the table on the slide. At the same time, we could get the modules for each from one page of research-oriented code. Preparation.py has functions to access the query, execute query, and load input data, and rename columns. Preprocessing.py has functions to replace categorical data with discrete numbers and filter input data. Prediction.py has functions to calculate parameters, logistic regression, and item response theory. The item response theory, I already said, is also called as two parameters, logistic regression. <clears throat> so this is used for calculating probabilities to get joint correct answers. Uh, this statistical method is used mainly in pedagogical domains. So now we can see the research-oriented code became loosely coupled. So there is a table of input data on the left. Interrupt. I do have some shareable slides or code for for our attendees to access. Sorry. Do you have the shareable slides or codes for us to access? Our attendees want to see the slides and the codes. Do you have? Any? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I did not. I did not push the, my code on GitHub yet. Oh, uh, okay. So okay. I will. I will push it. I will push it next week. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And how about the slides? Do oh yeah. Um, yeah. I, I will upload it later or during a break time. Okay. Um, we, I, have, it, mm. we have sent you the collaborate notes link, and you can take your time to edit at, on it. Okay. okay, and we have also sent you the Slido link, and the attendees will add questions for that, and may, maybe you can make use of this while you are keep entering okay. the Q&A session. Okay. okay. And that's all for now. Thank you. Uh, uh, sorry about that. I will push it, push the code later, and share my slides. Uh, interrupt. Can okay, so there is a table of input data on the left side on left side on this slide, which is used for two parameters logistic regression. On the I guess on the left side, uh, uh, there is a table of output data. Uh, on the re uh, right side, uh, there is a table of output data calculated by the model. Uh, the input data is about whether students answer each question correctly or not. So their item name, which is uh, not item name, as their student name, uh, difficulty, subject name, exam name, item name, item ID, uh, correction. Uh, I, I already mentioned it uh, in the previous slides. Uh, on the other hand, output data is about probabilities to answer questions correctly. So the role of this API is to get probabilities so we can directly level probabilities as endpoint name, uh, based on best practices, function name should be verb or verb press now. The role of this function is to calculate the results or get probabilities. So we can level calculate result or get props as a function name. So understanding what data is input and the output, which means understanding what data the code calculates and makes is considerably important step to make API. So now we could create a skeleton of the ML API, modularized uh, from a page of research-oriented code. So let's look at the real code. Uh,
So this is a research-oriented code, the same uh, the same code uh, which I showed in the previous demonstration. So let's try to find preparation code, a uh, preprocessing code, and memory code or calculation code. So in this stage, the point is that you don't need to strictly divide these codes. So now let's look at the. Uh, this code is loading, so you should be processing code. And uh, not processing, preparation code. Preparation code. Loading and grouping by uh, reset index and filter and replace uh, here we go logistic regression so this part is pre-processing code So pre-processing code and logistic regression and calculation parameters, logistic regression, IG parameters, and IRT and something uh, filtering and this is execution code and yeah. So you don't need to uh, strictly divide these codes. You can include uh, calculation part. This and we could get the uh, three part three parts of uh, research oriented code. So now break them out into function and then make them testable. So define you are uh, define your function name uh, because this is a loading. So load CSV and this is a filtering and delete same score per item. But this is uh, using a pandas and it's very hard to debug and trace. So I will break the Bob code and made it testable by using a for loop and a list like this. <coughs> this is more easy, much easier to debug and trace it. And this is a, this code is to replace string with numbers. So we can level, love it as function name. And this is the execution code. So you don't need to care about the logistic regression. It's already, it already has function name, so. Okay, so start uh, qualify input and the output of the code and define URIs and copy and paste uh, these functions into .py modules. So let's look at uh, uh, MRAPI demo two and API, app.py, and now uh, <clears throat> I level the app to, uh, uh, I level the get uh, function names as uh, what data you want to output. <clears throat> so you can get probabilities and this uh, role of this, the role of this endpoint uh, predicts. Uh, so you can name it uh, predictions. <clears throat> so after access, uh, after request access came to the slash v1 slash prediction, get probabilities functions uh, will be called. And at the same time data is prepared and pre-processed before calculation in prediction.py. So now we are ready to develop and make it work with API. 
So the next phase is going to be refactoring. And the next step is very important in the transformation. Also, you can get some useful tips which you can use in your daily works. So <clears throat> before that, uh, we should take 10 minutes break. Sorry, the zoom in, you're not, uh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes break. Um, I'm sorry about that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna upload it. Um, upload my slides on my Twitter. And actually, I already presented a similar talks in previous PyCon, like such as the PyCon JP and the PyCon the US and the PyCon Hong Kong. So you can find the similar tips about this tutorial on my Twitter. So yes, and during the break, uh, you can check it. So now 10 minutes break, uh, so see you around in 10 minutes. So I'm gonna be back in 10 minutes. <laughs> Do 我想要开给他看说那个连接可以直接一个 Hi. Hi. Hi, Jesse. Uh, a little quick sync. Now, do you know that the QA uh, link? Oh, yeah, I'm looking over it. Okay, just a reminder that you can yeah. ask the question here. Yeah, I'm going to answer now. Eh, now? Ah. Oh, maybe you can, you can use the QA time to answer those questions. Uh, we have a Q&A questions in this tutorial. Do you? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at the you can decide uh, when you will start to QA. It's, okay. The time is all yours, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much, yeah. Okay. What about how you哦,不去了。你聽到這是,聽到嗎?對。對,聽到。然後,我們把它打回去。
Hello. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, Jesse. Uh, sorry, there's an audio issue. We are fixing it oh, right now. now. Okay. So I now I upload my slide on Twitter. So, yeah, you can check it. Check it yeah. So, yeah. let me. We have so already let, shared your slides in the collaborative notes. And uh, okay. are you to start. Okay, so I'm going to start again. Also, before uh, talking about uh, continuing my tutorial, let me answer the questions on QA. So first question is what ML libraries should uh, Python engineers learn at minimum to turn research oriented code into production API? It seems to pound this circuit learn XG boost are important. Yes. Uh, this is a nice question. Yes, I like it. So yeah, I suggest uh Pandas NumPy scikit learn basically. Actually I list up. Uh, useful libraries or tools in in the in the slides. So I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it later in this tutorial. Me. So now um, let's move to refactoring steps. So, but we need to prepare for refactoring first, and there are two main parts of refactoring, which are I/O and the Pandas code. Uh, let's look at this process in more detail. I do not include refactoring of ML code because uh, this is because ML code tend to be short, and also most of ML code is based on ML libraries, so uh, there might not be spaces to rewrite or fix. So during the proof of concept with short development cycles, for example, when rushing to write code and develop model, and at the same time feeling business pressure, we tend to create a big ball of math with the code of preparation and the preprocesses. So we try to input several kinds of data and check output rather than we try to use several kinds of algorithms. So after we finish to quickly write research oriented code, and look back to the code to prepare and pre-process, we can see several group, groups of redundant or repetitive code. So in this section, I will tell you the processes to clean the redundant and the repetitive code with sample code. So before starting to refactor, we might need to understand more about the code. So in order to narrow down requirements of each code, write test code and take notes about the requirements of each code. So there are directories which I modularized in previous slides. API directory has app.py which has endpoint to get probabilities, a config file, prediction.py, pre preparation.py, and preprocessing.py. Test directory <laughs> has four modules of test code for each. So in order to narrow down, 
requirements of each code, I suggest that you write test code and take notes about the requirements of each code. So when taking notes in the code, you can use sharp comment out or doc strings. So there are four kinds of docs, uh, three kinds of doc strings, such as restructured text style, NumPy style, Google style. So you can choose one that you like. So I prefer to use Google style because other styles say parameters instead of argument. So I feel more comfortable for using argument instead of parameters. So on top of that, type hint can be one of the options which some of you come up with. But actually, any kinds of methods are OK to take notes. So understanding requirements of each code is the most important here than how to write documents. So this is the tips to use PyCharm. If you use PyCharm, uh, you can set doc string style from the above setting screen, like this side. So if you set up PyCharm, automatically show template of doc string. So I will show you in demonstration time. So after we wrote the test code and understood more than 70% or 80% of requirements of each code, we can start to refactor it. So I'm going to show you a case study at the first with refactoring the code to access BigQuery and just yes by using Google Cloud client libraries with Python. So there are two kinds of code on this slide. The code A uses star and extract all of data from the data set and outputs two dimensional arrays. The code B has a role to extract three specific kinds of data from data set only when come column <coughs> sorry only when come one is not now the query filters values and drop now so i suggest that you pre-process the data with query as much as possible if you use bigquery so this is because it is faster and lower cost than pre-processed data with python the cost and the processing speed of the bigquery is increased based on the amount of data processed. So when writing preparation code to access GCS, I suggest that you make bytes objects and upload it from memory to GCS with Python. I tend to write the code to make GCS files and local, uh, load it and upload it from local PC to GCS. Uh, this is because it allows me to quickly write the code. So as a result, a large amount of CSV files sometimes stay in your local PC and consume extra memory of PC. So I suggest that you make bytes objects. However, this code on this slide seems to be long. So I should simplify more by developing or using wrapper library. So there are two kinds of code with, with Google client libraries, which I showed in the previous slides. It combines and simplifies two kinds of code. In so doing, it reduces the total amount of code. Uh, GCP access uh, is a package I developed. After this talk is finished, please uh, speak, uh, contact with me if you have an interest in packaging. So now we can transform coding style with pandas into coding style with Python only in pre-processing code. So all data in the API should be processed using the same data type. This improves readability and maintainability as opposed to prioritizing coding speed. So one day I wondered why I struggle so much with refactoring the repetitive code of pre-processing in research-oriented code that I wrote a previous week. The reason is that uh, there are many coding styles with pandas, as you can see on the table. For example, filter function has six kinds of coding styles. I think that there are more than I wrote here. In case of coding style with pandas, it just uses basically list compilation in each function. And on top of that, the different style of co coding with pandas tend to be repetitive when trying to pre-process data in different ways. So pandas, pandas is very powerful and useful for data wrangling, but as a code might decrease readability and, and depending on the situation. So the way of coding without pandas could be easier for engineers to read the code 
and it could increase readability and maintainability. So this is the tips to write as assertion code. Uh, both code can automatically be executed by test. So writing test code for pandas, pandas code is quite critical in .py modules. This is because we have to prepare the data with data frame. So the above first code use pandas modules. It is very useful for you to write research oriented code on Jupyter Notebook. Uh, it will help you to prevent writing the calculation code to output wrong results. So the second code is trying to test the value with the list based on pandas data and data frame. Uh, it seems quite redundant. So I will show you how to write test code for the kind of code and refactor it into demo in the demo demonstration. So in the next demo, I should tell you in advance how I refactor the code. So what I do at the first is to roughly prepare the doc string and test function and decide what to refactor. Next, based on taking note, based on the notes which you take, which you took, I will make sure of output and input data of each function and decide how to refactor. So the next demo will deal with refactoring a part of preprocessing.py and try to transform coding style with pandas into the coding style with Python only. So let's look at the real code. So this is a Python. So now I will show I will show you how to transform the coding style with pandas into the coding style with Python only. I, I might not have enough time to demonstrate uh, refactoring of all of the code. So I pick up the refactoring about the function to replace categorical values with numerical values. So I suggest that you start to write test code for easy one to refactor, not to start to write difficult one from the beginning. So <clears throat> this is a code which we will refactor. So I will refactor this code. So I suggest that first you copy and uh, you comment out and copy the original code here and the right doc string. Like this, this is the Google styles I already set up in uh, uh, preferences and uh, where is the tools? Uh, tools and I forgot. Uh, I forgot where. Yes, here, P uh, Python integrated tools. Okay. Python integrated tools here. And you can change and apply and OK. So you can set up automatically doc syncs and take a note and input data is data frame and the results with uh, categorical values uh, arms Yeah, difficulty. <laughs> you don't need to the numerical values. Numerical values. Uh, also, output these replace results and output data frame first. So you can take notes roughly and 
the exception is a code for testing. And this is a, this uh, section, uh, this <coughs> screen is a test code modules. So you test, you have to add the test prefix. And roughly at first you have to just prepare and check if PyTest is check if PyTest is work correctly. So now is a past because I did not write anything in the test functions. If you remove this prefix, PyTest do not detect uh, test function. So if you use a PyTest, uh, actually I suggest use a PyTest instead of unit test or other testing tools. <coughs> so PyTest, I oh, no, 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 not PyTest. Test, and this, and this code is passed. Okay. So after preparation, we can divide the three sections of this function into set execute and check. So I suggest that you start to write from check section and at the same time you should check what data you want to test and what data you will get. So first uh, I will write actual data or data and expect it data. Actual data is uh, just uh, uh, the data which uh, this function will return. And expected data is uh, the correct data after refactoring, after refactoring. And execute. Execute is, so we have to prepare actual data. Actual data. And we have to input test data. And set, set means uh, preparing data and data. So input data is data frame. So actually I already prepared the test data here. So I'm gonna copy it. In. Whoa. So this is a test data and <clears throat> we have to change uh, the data type into data frame because input data is data frame. So test data and input this function and this data will, uh, this function will code and will return this replace results and the, re the data uh, which is a return it will be into arc, uh, actual data, uh, keeping actual data, and uh, it will be uh, assert with uh, expected data. So I have to also prepare to expected data. Expected data is results with numerical values. So in difficulty columns here. B3 is 46. And B2, B2, 50. And C1, C1, 43. B250 and okay. So now 
you can execute PyTest. Yes, uh, I got uh, expected errors because uh, actually uh, PyTest, func PyTest function uh, assert does not check, cannot check um, data frame. So you have to use the functions of uh, data frame. <laughs> so this is equal, you have to import uh, pandas.testing modules and assert from equal. And actual data and expected data. So now, oh, why not? Okay, I will copy it. Oh, yes, I did not. Um, to the frame. Okay, and there it in pass. Here you go. It will pass. And if you the Python functions will not pass right? because. Uh, PyTest uh, assert function assert option of PyTest does not check cannot check data frame. So use a uh, assert frame equal when you use when you want to check uh, pandas uh, data frame. So So when uh, using a search from when you use a search from equal functions, sometimes you face uh, you might face error about index differences. So just in case, you should use uh, reset index options. Reset index option. No. Uh, if you use uh, use a reset index option, you don't. Uh, this code do not care about. We don't. We don't need to care about index differences. So now, against we passed. Uh, if you want, do not want to care about data type in data frame. You, I suggest that uh, check D type options if different, uh, like like this fraud, different data type. These functions will ignore uh, data type differences in data frame. Uh, if you want to keep uh, index which you make, you have to use NumPy solution. Uh, you have to import from NumPy. Okay. So now I will use simple one. So I could prepare uh, test functions for uh, data frame. So I will change coding styles with pandas into Python only by using uh, list computation. So now let's um, refactor. Actually, I don't have enough time, so actually, I will show the already refactored code. Here we go. Uh, 
this is a ref this is a function already refactored. So you have to change uh, the data type of input and output in the test code. You don't need to the data frame. And and went out this so because in this case I want to check to com uh, list comprehensions. So now I will execute my test. Okay, now it's passed. So test code is uh, ready to test these functions. <coughs> so I first uh, write the code step by step by clearly as clearly as possible, and I use for loop and list comprehensions. It is easier for engineers to debug and trace the code. So next, be Pythonic like this by using this comprehension and let's get PyTest. Okay. So third, uh, make name shorter in list comprehension like this. Yeah. It can reduce amount of the code and execute PyTest. Okay. So if you wrote a uh, vertically list comprehension, you can easily uh, check and easily comment out each values and easily check it. So yes, this is just tips. So, so this is a code uh, which I refactored with Pythonic way. So now I hope that uh, I could show you how to refactor. So let's move to next stage. <clears throat> so now uh, let's check how the code can work quickly. So this is an image of um, Yes, uh, in this section, uh, two steps, uh, write decorators to check parameters and set up production-like environments uh, by using decorators. So this is an image of decorators in APIs. So after client sent request, APIs checks uh, whether parameter is correct or not and check access token. If something wrong with the code happens, error handler will catch the error. So if there are nothing wrong with the code, request will reach to the endpoint. So I don't have enough time to describe all of them. So I'm going to focus on talking about the request parameter check. So I'm gonna show an example of request parameter check with the JSON schema. Uh, this request Carl Coleman has student name and student grade as parameters. Uh, this JSON file is sample JSON schema. In this file, you can define what data should be checked and how data should be checked. So this make name grade.json file is defining the data type of student name or string, and it must be included as request parameters and the data type of student grade is also defined as string, and it must be included as true. So, and the maximum length of character is limited in 120 and minimum length is one character so this example, in this example, request parameters are not allowed to be empty. So based on the JSON schema, the JSON validate.py validates request parameters. The first validation validate JSON function checks whether the JSON schema exists or not. The second validate schema function checks whether the request parameters are correct or not based on JSON schema defined in previous slides. So in order to execute test these functions, write the function name as a syntax sugar and as an endpoint. As I looked over JSON validation code on the web, so most of the like like this code on this side. 
So finally, set the production like environment with Flask. So these are just tools. So I do not talk about how to use them in tutorial. So I just show you options. So set up visualization tools such as Tableau, Google Data Studio, Redash, and Ruka. So when trying to automate continuous integration, continuous integration, GitHub, like CI, and PyTest might be common options. So after setting up CI environment, you can deploy on GCP or AWS. This might be typical options for ML APIs, as some of you might already know. So also you can monitor the re response speed of ML APIs and check the responses by implementing system logs and analysis logs in advance. So it is useful for engineers to find the drift of model and debug the code. So I suggest that you also look up frameworks based on Flask, such as Flask App Builder, Flask App Builder, and Dash, and Locust. So Flask App Builder uh, can allow you to manage and visualize data. Dash can make it possible to interactively communicate with uh, with data. So Lowcast is a loading test tool, which can also allow you to do scenario tests. So let's look at the real code. So ML demo one here. And I already implemented. Oops. <laughs> so now um, we should check the if the API can work correctly or not. Hi, Jesse. Hi. Sorry to interrupt, but there's 10 minutes left for this tutorial. Uh, all right, OK. OK, thank you. OK, hi, my name is Katsuya. This, work, this API is working correctly. Return this to the name is student great. And the parameters, I'm, I'm sending request parameters. Student test name and the student uh, student great. Now this is the output. So next, if you send without a JSON body, yes, payload must be very JSON. So JSON validator check the body, the data, the data requested uh, based on JSON schema definition. <coughs> so if you the different uh, empty, uh, if you request with empty of student grade data, and just compile data will check the data in JSON body like this. So in last three, let me check um, this API will return predictions. It takes time. Here we go. So probability abilities, exam name, item ID, probabilities. Uh, these probabilities are calculated based on the result data, which we have seen in this tutorial. These probabilities mean the student which have which have <coughs> F3 level have probabilities to get correction for the item ID. So if we want to extract a specific item ID, I extract the probability with a specific item ID, 
you can <coughs> uh, pass or uh, you can give an uh, item ID and we'll get predict probability proper item ID, get an item ID and the specific <laughs> this endpoint will return specific item ID. Here we go. The same item ID. So student A, which have CI levels, uh, will have probabilities to answer these questions of this exam. So this is, uh, we I developed APIs based on calculating online learning data set. So last section. Yes, uh, there are already a lot of uh, resources about uh, tools on the web and tutorials are already presented in the past PyCon around the world. So you can look over them by yourself later. So, and on the other hand, uh, text-based materials. Uh, this is the materials for people who have an interest in data mining. There's a one ring with pandas and educational data sets. Uh, these URLs are very, uh, these resources are useful. So I suggest that um, this tutorial or cheat sheet, if you use Pandas so, or uh, do a data wrangling in your daily work. So I um, suggest uh, look at uh, this resource. So let me quickly summarize uh, the four steps to transform uh, research oriented code into ML APIs. So first step is to not first step, third step, um, to understand uh, what data can be stored and created and what data looks like and what is the nature of the data and what product can be generated from data, from this data. And the first step, and after I could understand 70% uh, or 80% of about data, so you can start to modularize. So categorize the research oriented code into preparation code, preprocessing code, ML code, and then break them out into functions and make them testable and qualify input and output of this code and define URI and then make, uh, make API endpoint. And the second, you refactor them and after preparing, preparation, pre preparing for refactoring and simplify IO and the pandas coding size. And the last three check uh, how the API can work correctly by writing the decorators and and set the production like environment. So now, uh, if you are interested in the education and technology domain, feel free to contact with me. So, thank you for attending this tutorial. Uh, that's all. Uh, I'm welcome to ask me uh, questions on Q&A. Uh, thank you. Thanks for sharing. And is there any questions here? Uh, uh, no. And so I think that it, it will be the end of this section. Thanks again, Jesse. And give thank a good time to him. Oh. Uh, sorry, Jesse, are you here? Are you online? Uh, right? um, there is one question on slide. Wait a second. Oh. Uh, would you provide the 2020 slides update in your Twitter or other source? Um, the third one. Uh, uh, would, you, would you please uh, repeat the question? Sorry? Uh, one of our attendees is asking that uh, the current version of your slides is different from the the slides you used. So could you give an update for this one? Uh, the third question. Uh, 
Yeah. Okay. One of is this, and the other one, would you release your code to GitHub or anywhere else? Okay, I will push the code uh, on GitHub later and share it on Twitter or anywhere, yeah? Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you. That's all for today now. Thanks for sharing. Thank you.